Albert Einstein reportedly once said that compound interest is the eighth wonder of the world. What in the heck is good old Al talking about? And what in the heck does it have to do with podcasting? I'm going to explain it to you on this episode of Podcastification. My name is Carrie Green, and I am the Client Happiness Guy at PodcastFastTrack.com, and this is Podcastification. Podcastification is all about you, teaching you how to podcast, how to put into practice the best practices that I and my team have learned in working with hundreds of clients. You are going to podcast better from listening to this show. If you like what you hear on Podcastification, please just hit the pause button, swipe to the sharing function on your app, and share this episode with somebody you know will benefit. And if you'd like to get in on more podcastification goodness, you can do it by subscribing to our podcast optimizer email series. And I promise you, you won't get lots of junk. You'll just get one actionable email a week. Go to podcastfasttrack.com slash optimizer. That is enough of that kind of stuff. Let's get you podcastificated right away. All right. All right. Welcome back to Podcastification. Carrie here. Hey, I have had such a crazy life lately with my travels and with the business just booming. I mean, this whole COVID thing, I don't get it, but our business has actually skyrocketed because of COVID. And who knows, it's probably not directly related to COVID, but maybe, I don't know. I don't understand such things. But what I want to talk to you about is a phenomenon that I've been witnessing with client shows, and in particular, the clients who've been with me for a long time. And I'm referring to it as As the the compound compound interest interest effect effect of of podcasting. podcasting. Now, if you don't understand what compound interest is, it's a term that has to do with money and investing. It's the idea that when you invest money in something and then it gains more money through the accumulation of interest over time, then you now have more money to gain interest from. So let me give you an illustration of compound interest at work. Say you invest $500 one time and never add anything else to it. And for the sake of us just having easy numbers to think through, let's just assume you can make 10% interest on that $500 the first month that you've got it invested and every month following. Now, granted, it seldom happens that way, but we're just trying to illustrate how compound interest works. Now, if you can do what I said, every month for a year, gain that 10%, you will have $1,563 at the end of one year. So do you see what's happening? Every month, your starting point for that investment is getting bigger than it was the month before. You have more principal on which to gain your 10% interest. And if you continue this illustration, doing the math, assuming 10% interest per month, then in just four years, your $500 is going to become $48,173. Wow. Just wow. It's an amazing example of the principle behind compound interest that I mentioned at the beginning. All right. So let's take that idea and switch it over to the concept of podcasting. Creating truly helpful podcast content is the same as compound interest. Sort of. I mean, producing great content that's valuable to your target audience consistently over time, you will see a similar kind of result. To understand how it works, at least in my mind, think of the very first episode that you ever publish as the initial deposit that you make into your podcasting fund. But you're not going to stop with just that one investment like I did in the illustration. You're going to add more to the pot every single episode that you produce. Every following episode is another deposit that you're making into your podcast investing account. And as you do so, the value that you're providing to your listeners is going to continue to grow. And just like interest, the volume of content and increasing value creates benefits to you. What are those benefits? Well, it could be increased listenership and subscriptions. It could be building a community and engaging with those listeners. It could be responses from your listeners to your calls to action. It could be influence and notoriety in your industry or in your niche. 
It could be joint venture and partnership opportunities that come about from the people you meet and the opportunities from the open doors that your podcast provides. It could also come in the form of possible sponsorship opportunities or deals that are made toward you. But don't hold your breath on those. I don't think those are the best way for the average podcaster to go about this thing. Now, the formula to make it happen, which I call the podcast compound interest formula, is A plus VC plus C over T. Let me say that again, and then I'll define my letters. A plus VC plus C over T. There's a graphic in the blog post for this episode where you can see it visually. Okay, A is the audience, the right audience for your content. VC is valuable content. C is consistency. And then over T means over time. Now let's break each one of those down. The audience. You want to make sure that you're speaking to the exact people who need what you have to offer. You don't just want to spray and pray, you know, shoot it all out there and hope somebody who needs what you have to offer hears it. No, you want to be strategic about this. You want to do a little bit of research and figure out who are the exact people who need what I have to offer and where do they hang out online and in person so that I can get the message about my podcast out to them. We could talk more about how to do that strategically. If you want to shoot me an email, it's Kerry, C-A-R-E-Y, at podcastfasttrack.com. I would love to hear your situation and help you brainstorm some possibilities. Now, this is like using a rifle instead of a shotgun when you go hunting. Now, for certain sorts of hunting, like, like waterfowl, you know, ducks and geese and that kind of stuff, a shotgun's exactly what you need because they're moving quickly and they're spread out across the sky and you need to kind of scatter gun that thing and hit one of them just any way you can. But when you're hunting big game, which is what we're talking about here, you want a rifle because those little pellets that come out of a shotgun are not going to do much damage to that elk that's out there in front of you. You've got to have a rifle. You want to be very targeted and hit exactly where you want to hit. That's what it means to find the right audience and to target your message to them. So that's the A part. That's the audience. Let's talk about the VC, the valuable content. The truly valuable, helpful, can't get it anywhere else in the way they get it from you thing that you offer is what I'm talking about here valuable content. You want to provide things that truly help your audience, that target listener that you're aiming to help. And let me just suggest this as well. Be generous in the way that you give that content. Don't hold things back. Don't hide things. Implement what I call the fire hose strategy. You want to make your listeners drink from the fire hose of your valuable content. And what's going to happen is as you give more and more and more and more and more about how to do what it is you teach to do or how to implement what it is you teach to implement or how to think about the things that you think about, your listeners are going to realize because they're drinking from a fire hose and just getting overwhelmed with all this great content, they're going to realize, hey, I need help doing this. And who's the natural person to help them? That's you. So that's the valuable content piece. Now let's talk about the consistency piece. When you're able to be consistent with the production and publication of your content, and we're talking about podcast content here, but it could apply as well to YouTube videos, blog posts, social media content that's truly helpful. When you're consistent, you build trust with your audience because they see that you take it seriously. You're demonstrating commitment, in other words, both to your subject area and to your audience. And this consistency also positions you as an expert or influencer or go-to person on your subject matter. It's part of the way that you demonstrate that, number one, you know what you're talking about, and number two, you're going to keep talking about it, and number three, that if they ever need help in that area, they know who talks about it and will keep talking about it, and they can come and get help from you. Now, the last part of the formula is that over time piece. Now, to be real honest, this is the biggest variable in the formula. I mean, you get to pick your audience and target your message to them. And you get to craft the most impacting, valuable content possible. And you get to churn out that content on your chosen schedule. But how long it takes to build the compounding effect will depend on things that are honestly outside your control. 
like your audience is going to be different than another niche or industry's audience. Your niche and industry may have certain variables that impact how long it takes to build up the impact of this approach. There may be societal or world event type issues that impact. I mean, this whole COVID thing, nobody saw this coming and it's affected everybody's compounding effect because it's either increased the need for what you have or it's decreased the need for what you have. And so people haven't responded as readily. But the point of this over time piece is this, like water that over time carves out the channel of a creek bed making it deeper and deeper and deeper and wider and wider over time. Your consistency over time with your valuable content to your exact perfect audience is going to wear away at their resistance to you and your offer. And I don't say that in, in a, I don't know, a, an irritating way. I don't mean you should be irritating. I just mean the more you demonstrate your competence and the value of what you have to offer, the more they're going to become accustomed to you and think of you as a friend and trust what you have to say so that when they are ready, you're the first one they think of. Hello? All right. So I'm very curious what you think of my compounding, compounding interest, interest podcast, podcast formula. You can reach out to me, Carrie, C-A-R-E-Y at podcastfasttrack.com. Or you can just reply if you see this on social media and tell me what you think of this podcast, podcast compound, compound interest formula. formula. Well, that's all we got for today. Go out and make it a podcastificating day. This show is brought to you by Podcast Fast Track, where my team provides professional podcasting services without the time suck. Full production, editing, and show notes all in one monthly subscription package. You can find out more at podcastfasttrack.com. Now go out and make it a podcastificating day.